What is going on everybody? Just wanted to make a video kind of talking about my thoughts on mutt drafts and kind of what kind of position it's in at this point in the season. Now I know a mutt draft disclaimer. I know mutt drafts the competition is not the best. I know it's probably the worst out of all the game modes right now. Uh, you could probably find tougher competition in regular mutt head to head. Obviously, salary cap is where all the guys are at. As a weekend league starting this week, there's going to be a lot of competitive guys in there as well. So, Mutt Draft's probably the weakest in terms of competition. But I mainly just want to talk about whether or not the rewards feel worth it and kind of give some tips. Uh, maybe you really like Mutt Drafts as a game mode. I think that's the only way I would play it consistently more than what I have. I'm probably, probably done with it for season one uh, but uh, I just kind of want to talk about my thoughts so first things first the rewards now the rewards uh, it's four wins or one loss so you only get one chance uh, to lose a game it's not last year like I think you could have two losses and it was up to six wins so now it's four four wins and one loss now and it scales so if you get one win I think it's like 5k um, and you get some gold players now caveat the new entry is five rank tickets which is now 15k so it costs 15k to enter if you don't win any games then you really really come out behind if you win one game you come out behind two games is where it somewhat starts you, you start breaking even you, i think it's 10k and you might get like two gold player packs or something like that that you know might be able to get you back up to 15k you get lucky pulling a lead or something now three wins you get 15k so you get your coins back along with I think it's one or two like gold premium players or premium packs um, so that's where you start gaining a little bit and then 20k or four wins rather is where you get 20k along with an elite player pack now I've gotten uh, as you saw at the beginning of the video my record was 14 and 0 so I've won four games three times I'm in my fourth season right now but I've won it three times and all three of those elite player packs uh, basically were pretty awful I got two 80 overall linemen and then Ross Cockrell who's an 81 overall cornerback so uh, the elite packs definitely haven't been great not to say uh, you can't pull something amazing out of it such as like an Antonio Brown or Rob Gronkowski uh, but it seems like the elite packs odds are you're gonna pull a very low overall elite I've had some friends who won four games in mutt drafts and uh, I think one of my friends pulled like a Stephon Gilmore 83. Uh, he pulled an 84 overall defensive tackle. So he had a little bit better luck with it, but still rather low overall elite players. Nothing crazy. So I think that's what you can mainly expect out of those elite player packs if you get those four wins. So is it worth it? Probably not, especially whenever you start getting, you know, ranked pretty highly. Not to say the competition amps up like if you were to get ranked highly in salary cap, but um at least you know whenever you do get ranked somewhat high the people become a little bit more competent than normal so i could definitely see like randomly dropping a game and you're only getting one or two wins um and at that point it's obviously not worth it so i think the only way it's worth it is if you actually win all four games um and get that elite player pack in contrast if you compare those rewards to something like regular mutt head-to-head -head, or even salary cap salary caps rewards Obviously, uh, salary cap a lot more competition, but the rewards are so much better. Uh, but for comparison's sake, we'll do mutt head to head. So, say you're in mutt head to head. Um, I think I'm in pro first string right now. So I think you get like 800 to 1,000 coins per win. So say you win seven games. Say you make the playoffs. So seven games, you're getting 800 to 1,000 coins. Say you're almost getting you know six and a half to seven k. Uh, just from that now remember no entry fee so uh, there's no entry fee so you're not you know starting off down 15k like you are in mutt drafts uh, so right off the bat you know just by making the playoffs you get about 7k in coins along with I'm pretty sure you get a coin bonus whenever you make the playoffs so that might be one or 2k and then when you make the playoffs you get three competitive tokens I believe it is uh, which are basically the same thing as the um, comp competitive badges from last year. So you can quick sell them for 1,500 coins each. So three at 1,500 coins, that's 4.5K right there. If you want to quick sell, or you can keep them and trade them in for the sets. I think um, it's 60 of them for an 87 and a 90 overall elite player. I think it's 15 
for an 83 to 86. Uh, I think it's like five or something for you know a low overall elite, but he's uh, NAT, non-auctionable or tradable. Or you can hoard them all and trade in a hundred uh, for the 90 overall Amari Cooper. So either way, there's definitely money to be made there, no matter kind of what route you go, as long as it's not the NAT, the low overall NAT elite route. Um, I would only do that if you're really desperate to improve your team quickly. Uh, so by comparison, say you win, you know, you get into the playoffs so that you're already at like 10K right there. If you win a few games in the playoffs, um, especially if you win the Super Bowl, if you win the Super Bowl, you end up getting 10 um, of those competitive badges. So that's 15K uh, that can go if you quick sell or can go towards the sets along with the coins you make. Uh, from the games themselves, which is probably going to be about 15 to 20k, so you're looking at about 35 uh, to 35 to 40k maybe, um, 30 to 40k anywhere between that range uh, for about 10 games of of gameplay. Uh, assuming you go perfect, obviously you're not always going to go perfect. Say you go like seven and two in the season, and then say you run the table in the playoffs, and you end up so that's about like 12 or 13 games maybe. You end up playing, um, say, c compare that to Draft Champs where you have, you know, four games for, say, three different trips. So you do three trips, you win four games each time, which is not definitely not guaranteed. Uh, Draft Champs, a little more high risk. But if you do win four games three times in a row, uh, you're making off an about 15K profit in terms of coins along with whatever those elite players sell for. So in my case, my elite players were selling for about five and a half to six K a piece. And so if you add that times three, you're looking at about 16 K maybe uh, in elite players. So I probably broke about even uh, with what would happen if I were to go into mutt head to head and, you know, make the playoffs win a Super Bowl uh, after playing three seasons of mutt drafts. And that's at best case scenario in mutt drafts. Obviously that was also best case scenario in head to head, but the drawbacks are much bigger in mutt drafts if you don't run the table as opposed to in mutt head to head if you don't win a Super Bowl you're still coming off with profit because you didn't pay 15k uh, to actually enter the event like you did in mutt drafts so much higher risk and it's not really it's it's higher risk and same reward basically for mutt drafts so to answer whether or not I think mutt drafts worth it I don't think it's worth it right now unless you just really really like the game mode um, tips for the game mode, I would say, uh, I'm looking at, I have my playbooks that I like more than others. Everybody's going to have their preferences, but one tip for me would be look in your playbook and find like a trips tight end offset or a Trey Y flex offset. You can basically find one of those two formations in every single playbook in the game and get really comfortable running out of that formation. So you have inside zone, you usually have a levels play PA crossers. Uh, that's a three-play combo that you can really build your offense around. Um, going back to kind of Madden 16, that was a lot of the meta in Madden 16 was you saw you were seeing those three plays a lot. So uh, it seems like a cycle, but I would definitely get comfortable running uh, that type of offense, and then you can branch out into your other uh, formations depending on what playbook you're in. But uh, you can always be confident knowing that you're going to have that type of little mini scheme out of that trips formation and basically whatever playbook you want to go to. And a lot of people in mutt drafts can't really stop that scheme, that, that base vanilla scheme. I was having a lot of success just running that, um, and a lot of the people in mutt drafts couldn't stop it. So that would be my advice on offense. On defense, I mean, basically, uh, you want to play – I mean, I've been playing a lot of cover four, so I just mix up a lot hard flats, cloud flats. Sometimes I'll go – you know, double flat on the outside, like a hard flat, cloud flat combo if they're running a lot of sideline bench concepts. So it just kind of depends. Uh, I think making adjustments is the biggest thing right now on defense since defense is pretty bad. It's in a bad spot, especially zones. So you, you really have to make clutch adv adjustments on, you know, very important downs to get stops against good players. So that would be my advice on defense. Just uh, just just adjust. That's, that's basically... Uh, the name of the game right now on defense in Madden 18. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely comment. Let me know what you guys thought. If you guys have been playing Mutt Drafts, let me know what you guys think of Mutt Drafts. If you guys think the rewards are worth it. If you think, you know, the cost to enter should go down. Whatever your opinion on it is, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, I think it would be interesting to hear everybody's opinion on that. But like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And until next time, guys, take it easy.